We're very honored to have the Lieutenant Governor join us here tonight on uh, uh, when we honor small businesses. Uh, you know, here in the city of Brockton, certainly uh, we have made a focus out of uh, supporting small businesses and particularly in the last couple of years with an emphasis on supporting women-owned small businesses, minority-owned small businesses, and immigrant-owned small businesses because we believe that's a big part of the future economic development of this city. And uh, the Lieutenant Governor uh, and the Baker Plato administration have been strong supporters of small business. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor understands uh, the strain on local budgets uh, because uh, her background, uh, give it, I, I know this, but I'll share with everybody else, uh, the Lieutenant Governor's background uh, was first as a uh, select woman uh, in the town of Shrewsbury. And so she's governed at the local level. Uh, she served uh, 10 years, Lieutenant Governor, in the state legislature. Uh, and went on to uh, become Lieutenant Governor, uh, running with uh, Charlie Baker. And one of the first things Governor Baker did is uh, he asked the Lieutenant Governor to be their key liaison with local cities and municipalities and towns. And that's been kind of her mission in this administration. And I will tell you that uh, she does it exceptionally well. Uh, we feel as though we have a friend in the Polito and Baker administration uh, she's always receptive. I don't know how she does it for 351 cities and towns. I get tired running around Brockton. She does the same thing on a statewide level. Uh, but I know that I speak for a lot of the mayors in feeling as though uh, that we can always reach out to the Lieutenant Governor when there's an issue facing our community. And uh, so it's been her support of local government and her support of small businesses that I think have really been uh, the hallmark of her service so far as Lieutenant Governor. So it gives me great pleasure to, once again, because she's been a regular visitor here, but once again to welcome and introduce to you the Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Karen Blue. Gotta love the entertainment here this afternoon. I think that's great. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, for your kind words. It's Always a pleasure being in your company and to be here uh, in the city of, of Brockton at Massasoit. Uh, it's, it's an honor. Uh, you know, in, in uh, Mike's uh, presentation, you know, it's, it's a team effort, okay? It's a team effort all the way around. Uh, we're hoping our, our team tonight has another success uh, for sure. But it's really how our, our administration is approaching our work uh, with the cities and towns across our Commonwealth. Uh, with our partners in the business community, and I'd just like to kind of highlight some of that uh, with all of you today. First, uh, to your award recipients, uh, the Wood, Wood Palace Kitchens and Epicure Wine. These are terrific stories, and these stories are not just fiction, they're real. And what I love about them is the idea that you can take your dream and you can put it into a plan, and then that plan becomes reality and you're celebrating uh, today by receiving these awards, uh, the accomplishment of your respective teams. And you represent uh, so many people uh, here in our Commonwealth that might have that dream, but might be a little risk averse and not sure how to take those next steps to become a business owner. It's an it's a overwhelming process to make that leap. And uh, we thank you uh, for doing that because you are an integral part of this community, creating jobs, creating spaces and places for people to enjoy and for giving back uh, as business, business owners do across our commonwealth. Um, I, in, as I was introduced as a public servant, starting my public service in Shrewsbury uh, back in 1995 when I was first elected, and uh, what, what, what we didn't talk about and I'd like to just share with you is that I come from a, a family business background. My great-grandfather uh, came to this country from Sicily back in 1909 with the idea that he would work hard and, and make a better life for his family, like so many immigrants then and still have that idea that they can come here and build that life. Uh, he was uh, about five foot two, had 50 bucks in his pocket when he came here, and he had a, an amazing work ethic, and he was able to use his hands. He was a a crafty man. And uh, he didn't make anything very exciting when he started out. He made concrete blocks, and he made a lot of them. <laughs> and he eventually 
made enough uh, with that business, uh, loosely dis defined, to save his money and buy a piece of heavy equipment. And that equipment led uh, to a business of installing underground uh, water and sewer pipe and eventually uh, becoming a, a, a builder of, of homes and properties and is still in my family today, three generations later. But I have seen through those generations uh, the struggles that come with being a bis business owner, uh, the risks that you take in trying to grow your business, and the res enormous responsibility that you have to your team, to the people who come and work with your organization day in and day out, and how committed you are to meeting their payroll, meeting their, their paycheck, and that you worry about not only them and the work that they do for you and with you, but their families and all that come with that. So today in small uh, business is celebrated in the month of May. We celebrate all of those risk takers, all of those dreamers, all of those entrepreneurs today and want to be uh, here in our Commonwealth. Now back to the community piece of this and it is a lot of uh, where I spend my time as the Lieutenant Governor working alongside of Charlie Baker is in our communities. We have 351 cities and towns in this Commonwealth and what I was able to do with the Governor is start a best practices program with local government. Now you think about your own business and why it's important to continually evaluate your practices and always look for better and more innovative and modern ways to deliver your service. We are taking that approach with local government and embedding in local government the best practices from financial planning to budgeting to energy efficiencies to human resources to what, what capital plans, housing plans, whatever it takes to strengthen and improve the quality of services that can be delivered at the local level. I want to thank uh, the mayor and I want to thank my colleagues in the legislature for their support to this program. The mayor of the city of Brockton was one of the first signers of this best practices program. And from that, he's been able to uh, take advantage of other grant programs um, in particular, the MassWorks program, uh, you got extra points on your application and we were able to invest $10 million in the parking uh, garage in Brockton because he was able to demonstrate to us that better and best practices in his organization, in the city's organization, mattered. And for the legislators who are here uh, advocating for the funding in this program in the state budget, and for local aid and school aid and Chapter 90 road aid, always there uh, doing their part, Representative Cassidy and Cronin. I want to thank you very much for your advocacy. But this best practices program works. We now have 285 communities signed into it out of the 351. So it tells you that city ma mayors who are the chief executives of their uh, municipality are looking for innovative ways to approach their, their, their delivery of service. Now, when you think about what makes a strong community, this is sort of the compass that I use for my work. And it really comes from my experience as a business owner, my experience as a local official in the community of Shrewsbury, where my family is deeply rooted. And I, I think about what makes a strong community, and there's three basic things. Obviously, you need strong education, the best. <laughs> Everywhere in this Commonwealth, no matter where you live, your kids, your grandkids need to access a good quality education. Second, jobs, lots of them, at all levels. We need people plugged into work. Work matters, jobs are the best. Uh, social service we can offer to anyone in any family. The, the idea of work and the stability that comes with your paycheck, it matters. And then of course the whole health and wellness piece and safety. From emergency responders to your, your fire uh, officials and police officers to the whole health and wellness piece from dealing with addiction and the opiate crisis. All of that comes into play when you're thinking about defining a good, solid community. And when we uh, think about Massachusetts from that lens, and we think about the 351 cities and towns and the gateway communities and the rural communities and the suburban communities, 
We need to figure that out in all these places. So that through best practices, through strengthening our schools and, and creating these jobs and opportunities, no matter where you live here, you have a good opportunity. No matter where you live, your quality of life is solid. And no matter where you live, you're in a place that's part of a safety net that binds our Commonwealth together. And it's because of that that I believe uh, Massachusetts earned the number one ranking in US News and World Report of number one. We are judged as the number one state in the country. And every single one of us in this room, from our mayor to our uh, elected legislators, to the business leaders, to the entrepreneurs, all can feel part of being that number one place where you've laid your roots, started your business, and have lived in your community. But we can't take that for granted, right? We're winners here in Massachusetts. We love our sports teams. You know, we, we love all of them. And we've got to continue to work hard at it. So what we'll do on our end is continue to invest in our communities, continue to support our businesses. A couple of examples of how we're doing that. I, I think the best bang for all of our buck is investing in our people. The people in this Commonwealth are our biggest asset. So when we're talking about K-12 public education, we have added over $300 million more in K-12 public education. We need to continue that commitment. We've been able to embed in vocational technical schools and right here at Massasoit Community College equipment that will allow our students to work with their hands. You know, it's something that works, literally, right? Learning how to do something, applied learning, they call it, on CNC machines and the kinds of sophisticated pieces of equipment that are now in the workplaces, embedding those in the classroom, in our vocational technical schools, into our community colleges, so that kids can graduate with the skills that are actually needed in the workplaces across our Commonwealth today. This innovation economy is, is real. We are known as the most innovative state also in the country, now two years in a row, says Bloomberg. These emerging industries in life science and advanced manufacturing and precision manufacturing require different skills. And in order for us to be as competitive as we are in Massachusetts, we need our people to have those skills that can go directly into this workforce. So we put a $442,000 grant to outfit the new veterinary technician laboratory for new associate degrees, for example, at Massasoit Community College. At Brockton High School, we were able to embed equipment for aided design, 3D printings to support the robotics and artificial intelligence uh, programs there. And I want to thank the mayor for connecting us through the Youth Career Connect program as well. And of course, supporting our vocational technical schools across our commonwealth. This is not your grandfather's you know, manufacturing place anymore. And to embed in our vocational and technical schools, the kinds of investments and equipment are essential. You know, these are perhaps some of the, the um, more sought after uh, programs for students. We have waiting lists now at our vocational technical career schools. Uh, I guess that's a good problem to have, but it's clearly uh, something that's working in the Commonwealth and we need to do more of it. Uh, for those uh, areas of education, say in Springfield, we're trying things out like empowerment zones, giving superintendents and city officials far more flexibility in how they educate their students. And for uh, students that believe that a two or four year degree is, is needed for their career path, we're trying to make it far more affordable here in Massachusetts. 50% of our high school graduates go on to state colleges and universities. And we have introduced what's called the Commonwealth Commitment, where you can graduate from high school, transfer credits to a community college, attend that community college for two years, maintain a 3.0 average, take all those credits and apply them to any state college or university and graduate with a four-year degree for half the amount, okay? That's the kind of investment in people that will really make a difference here in our Commonwealth and allow us to be that number one state. So back to what is this all about? Your business owners, your business leaders, you are the people that when something comes up in the city and they need something, you're who they call. And you're always there giving back, sponsoring events, buying tickets. 
you are integral to that safety net in every community, and it's obviously evident here in Brockton. And as we have had these listening sessions across our Commonwealth now, we've heard uh, from a lot of you, and these are listening sessions that are meaningful. In our first year of office, we asked Secretary Ash to conduct these listening sessions across our state, and he did so. And in doing that, he was able to come up with a framework for our economic development bill, largely with the input from business owners across our Commonwealth. It was called Opportunities for All, and thankful to our legislators for supporting the economic development bill. It contains uh, half a billion dollars in mass works infrastructure funding, housing tax credits, uh, a, a lot of good tools to help bring private dollars to any investment deal uh, to create jobs and opportunities in areas. So these listening sessions are really important to helping our administration better serve the business community. What are the barriers to growth? What are the things that you have to deal with in doing business with the Commonwealth that you feel can be streamlined or modernized or improved? Things that might cost your staff and your company more time and money than is needed. If you begin to think about that, I'm sure you can come up with a list and let us know. We can figure out how to better collaborate on the government end, streamline processes, and better serve you. Uh, one of the things we knew we had to do when we came into office was review all of the executive branch regulations. It hadn't been done in over 20 years. And we did that. One, uh, it was over, over, a little over 1,700 regulations. We had listening sessions then as well, and we were able to uh, terminate over 600 of those regulations, streamline a whole set more, and then the others um, obviously had to stay in place for uh, federal or state reasons. But whether it's from regulation, streamlining that, creating a business environment with certainty, because a lot of times a business owner worries because they're not certain about the climate, not certain what state or local or federal government's going to do. While we can't control what happens in Washington, we can control here in this state that we want to send a solid message to employers who exist here, employers who want to start up here, or employers who are eyeballing Massachusetts to become their new headquarters or home, that we mean business in this Commonwealth, and we're going to be fair and open in that process. So today, uh, while we are pleased to see players like GE locate in the seaport, um, an Omni Hotel begin groundbreaking, I'm pleased to see so many small businesses that make up 80% of the businesses in this Commonwealth that are truly the backbone of our economy and in, are creating the jobs in downtowns and main streets and in communities like Brockton where these jobs matter. So what we want to hopefully learn from you today in our listening session are ways that we can help you grow and be that kind of generational business like my family's had the opportunity to have in this Commonwealth because I truly believe the, the measure of success for all of us is when the next generation has the opportunity to lay their roots. That means our kids stay in Massachusetts because they graduated from good schools, they stay here because they can find a good job, and they can find a good community, perhaps the one they grew up in, to lay their roots and start their families. So let's do that in business as well. Generations of business succeeding here in the Commonwealth is success for all of us. Thank you for your time, and thank you for your leadership. I want to thank all of you for coming, but I also want to take a moment to thank everyone today that was a sponsor and remind you that we have the Athena event coming up on June 16th at the newly expanded Old Colony Y in Stoughton. And today we want to thank the ambassadors, photographer Rich Morgan, Rob Peters Entertainment for providing the sound, Bob Nelson from the SBA, Mike Tamburo from the Pawtucket Red Sox, Lieutenant Governor Polito, Mayor Bill Carpenter, the awards program and breakfast sponsor, Bank of America Small Business Services, the Small Business Nominating Committee, South District Jazz Quartet, Brockton Community Access Channel, Fun Enterprises, The Enterprise, the Massachusetts Office of Business Development, and the Conference Center of Massasoit. Thank you all for today. Thank you. Thank you, Bob.